a two oh three and I would like to move a motion for the September twenty fifth, twenty twenty three meeting of the Capital Planning Committee. And I see that we do have a quorum, so we are able to conduct business. And uh, it looks like uh, on today's agenda, we have a pretty slim agenda, actually, or, or focus, I guess is the word. Uh, we're just going to be discussing the $3 million request for planning and architectural for the uh, DPW facility. And uh, yes, uh, Carolyn sent the, uh, I finally got the email from her when she got the right address. And uh, in, oh. any, anyway, um, you know, I reviewed that legislation too. I, I read the entire not the entire, but a good chunk of it. And what it's doing is uh, establishing a public uh, buildings, municipal public buildings authority. And uh, so what they're gonna do is divert money from the marijuana tax into that authority and they'll be distributing it based on the applications that are received, kind of similar in structure to what the uh, Mass School Building Authority does right now. And so I guess if you recall last week, you know, I had some concerns about us making a $3 million bet, putting it down on the table without any assurance that uh, number one, that this legislation is even gonna pass, but number two, if it does, how long are we gonna have to wait in line? So I, Yes, you know, I'm kind of leaning. I'm not against the DPW building, first of all. I really think it's long, long overdue. But I'm not so convinced that the taxpayers of the town of Hadley are going to vote for a $30 million project without any funding to help them along with this. Because, as you know, Dan showed us, Dan Zadonik last week, we're talking about close to a you know, 20, 25% tax increase in the first year when this kicks mm -hmm. in. You know, I don't know what Bill and Randy and Abe, you, Linda, think about that, but. Right, yeah. and, and Paul, um, I did talk to Dan about, um, the DPW building also is water, includes water and sewer. So although the select board could decide to put it all on the tax rate, there is the option of putting over to so sewer or water which would also impact those rates, perhaps, perhaps a little differently than the tax rate hits people. I don't know exactly, but um, I just wanted to put that out. It wouldn't completely be on it. We, we would still be footing the bill 100% from the town if there, we don't have the grant, but it might be a little bit different than just the tax rate. And it's you know that's one of those situations. Though, but you know, and I get it. I get what you're saying, but it's. I'll get closer to your computer. You know, it's uh, you get. How's this any better? Yeah, if you <laughs> talk louder, do something. <laughs> well, I don't want to yell. I can't yell. I'm incapable of that. I but, bet you could yell. <laughs> let's see if I can. There's nothing you can do except be close to close to your microphone. When you sit way back, you're in and out. Okay. Well, how's That's this? Better. Any yeah. better? Okay. Yes. So what I was saying, Linda, is yes, I agree with you on that, on the apportionment of it, but total cost is going to be exactly the same. You know, it's the same pair of pants. It's just coming out of three pockets instead of right. Three. And uh, so it's, you know, the burden is going to be precisely the same, whether it's enterprise fund slash taxation or all taxation. But, uh, you know, I don't know what Randy and Bill think about the likelihood of this passing without any help, you know, from the state or the federal government? Well, uh, just to be clear, I'm on the DPW Feasibility Study Committee. And I hear what you're saying, Paul, but I think we have to we have to decide whether we think it's worthy of going to town meeting and then the, the, the townspeople have to decide. I don't think we can decide for them ahead of time and hopefully with the three when the three if and when the three million dollars comes before town meeting somebody would have the wherewithal to say hey there's no guarantee that you know if we get all these all our ducks lined up and then it costs 30 million dollars that it's going to get voted in at that point in time 
it's a it's a gamble like anything else in this life. And that's I hear you, that's a pretty expensive gamble. So I'm wondering this this is where I'm heading with this is can we defer this to the annual town meeting because of this pending legislation? Maybe by then they'll have some traction on it. We'll have some kind of an answer as to number one, whether or not this is going to pass. And number two, if it does pass, it looks like they're going to have a lot of work, meaning they, meaning the state, to get this uh, the infrastructure set up for this authority and get all the policies and regulations and procedures in place before they can actually roll it out to the individual towns. And, you know, I don't know, you know, you guys probably know better than I do, but how long would it take to get a set of plans drawn up if we were to tell, you know, like time-wise, does anyone right. have any idea? Probably you, Randy, of any of us. Would well, maybe I'm going to guess a year, but I don't know. You know, get us the plans drawn. We got to go through the whole process of hiring somebody and and then getting them to do their thing. But I would say a year. And then we got not we, but the legislators got to go through their uh, process too. And if the legislature does pass the bill, like I said, they got to set this whole thing up from scratch, and that's going to take them some time too. Look how long. It took when they legalized marijuana in Massachusetts, how long it took to get all that going before they were even able to start allowing uh, the first cannabis shops to open. And so I don't think this is something that's gonna pass today and tomorrow they're ready to take applications. So maybe we're better off waiting just to make sure we don't spend a lot of uh, funds for nothing. Cause I, I don't know what the voters would do. You're right, Randy. But I, I I thought I understood that that the legislation was one way in, but Randy, didn't you get going on this committee before the legislation was even talked about? That that I thought Carolyn was talk was uh, mentioning that having our representatives put just uh, find some money for us, and it's not our only option for getting extra uh, money, is it? No, it's not the only option. And and you're right. We started the process before there was talk about this new legislation. So, um, again, I feel like we have to let the townspeople decide. And it, it's we all know that it's a, a, a much needed uh, project. And the feeling is the longer we wait, the more expensive it's going to be. Um, you know, if we had done it three years ago, it'd be half the money that it is now. And we, we certainly can't predict the future, but I can't imagine think prices are going to come down a whole lot. Uh, and whether it's next year or two years or 10 years, it's still going to burden the taxpayers probably similarly. And whether that legislation comes on board sooner or later, we don't know. But I don't think it would be as complicated as the marijuana stuff, Paul, because you had all kinds of federal regulations to deal with with that marijuana stuff that you don't have to on this. But again, who knows? Well, I just again, I'm just trying to protect the taxpayers from us taking three million dollars of their money spending mm -hmm. and come up empty handed because the voters will say, well, no, this legislation failed. It's not going through. Now the taxpayers are saying there's no way we want to see our taxes go up 20 plus something percent mm -hmm. in one year. And we just lost $3 million. That's where I'm coming from. I get it. I understand that completely. Yeah. I'm a proponent of a new DPW. Yeah. No, I get it. And again, it's a gamble. And if we do, if we, we spend them the 3 million now, at least the plans we have won't have to be redone unless building code changes tremendously or, you know, there's all new uh, construction techniques that have to be used. Those should be able to be, you know, put in a, in a drawer, so to speak, and we would have them when we need them. Uh, but I agree with you that it's going to be a hard sell no matter what we do uh, as far as the, the 27 to $30 million dollars 
to build the building. So, but we got to start somewhere. And sadly, I wish, you know, it was $3,000 we had to spend to get to where we need to be, not $3 million. That seems ridiculous, but that's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, what, <laughs> would it really hurt that much if we wait until the annual town meeting because it's six months only, and this is a multi-year project. This is way off into the future. We're talking, what, 20, FY 26, 27, before we'd see anything any real uh, construction going on on the site there? Yeah, that's true. I mean, every, the uh, Carolyn's counting on it, and and I'm just throwing this out. It, I'm not saying it's the it's it's got to be, but Carolyn's counting on something being on this town meeting. The committee is planning on something being on this town meeting. We're having an open house at the DPW building on the 14th to get people to see how uh decrepit things are down there now and hopefully get people on board to uh vote in favor of it so and and we could we could suggest that that it goes on the town meeting warrant for now for for fall town meeting and the people could still vote it down paul you know, uh, no to, to be clear, this com this committee doesn't control whether it goes on or not. Right. It's just no, a recommendation. Right. And that would be up to the select board, which would still put it forward. We would uh, the capital committee is only making a recommendation as to whether it should go, whether it should pass at town meeting. So all those things would still go forward, um, if that's what the uh, the select board I mean, um, select board uh, wanted to go on. And I'm, I'm curious, Randy, you said um, all, we at least still have the designs and they'll be ready for next time. How long do you think the designs um, are good for? Absolutely. I mean, before there's other changes that, that or or is it just a matter of you think most changes um, in, in requirements would just mean a, a little bit of tweaking? That's my thought, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, I'm sure that you know, they might be good for two or three years at the most, the way technology is changing, that, you know, something that seems to be top of the line today or whatever we decide is necessary could could be a piece of junk tomorrow. And that's another reason maybe to bring the actual design date closer to the actual construction date so that minimize the possibility of what, closer. You, of what you two are discussing. Any better? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm saying that, you know that's another reason to maybe have the select board discuss deferring this. You know, and you're right, Linda. We're we're the capital planning, and we don't decide what's going on and off the warrant. But maybe the select board could discuss this because you want to minimize the chances of that happening too. That you have a quote unquote stale design, and then mm -hmm. you have to spend even more money to fr uh, freshen it up again. Um, I, I know, Randy, is this right that you were all originally put, planning to put it on for the Springtown meeting? And it was um, in hearing from people saying things are getting more expensive. Let's try to jump on it. Let's be first in line when the legislation passes, that the pressure was really on your committee to bring it forward um, and at least get the ball rolling. Is that right? That sounds reasonable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would agree with that. Bill, do you have any thoughts on this? No, be, being new on the committee, fairly new. Uh, that what what I'm hearing is very logical on on both sides, or on all sides, I should say. But uh, I I think it's something that it's hesitating. We're going to lose some ground. You've already have, you know, brochures printed up, and and a, a open house arranged. I think once you start rolling, you can't start and stop, start and stop. Uh, not that we're going crazy about it, but I think that uh, once you start informing the public, you know, there are a lot of people that, of course, are going to choke up about it. But uh, I think once they see what is sitting there. Uh, what we're trying to do and replace and help the town, basically. It's not just the DPW. It's the whole town we're trying to uh, improve. 
uh, I think that uh, a, a good number at least should come on board and, and agree with with it. Yeah. Does that make I, sense? I, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, Bill. And I think that, again, we need to let the townspeople decide what they want to do. Yeah. And whether it's this year, or next year, and anybody that wants to speak to it at town meeting can certainly voice their opinion, and then people are going to vote, and then we'll know where where we're going with it. That sounds very very logical. Well, do you folks feel if that led if this legislation fails? That the voters, you know, who knows what they're going to do? Do you think they would give us a, a green light on this project for $30 million? That's a question we won't know till town <laughs> meeting, Paul. Yes, this is as Linda we can We can guess week. back and forth, and you just never know. Uh, things amaze me at town meeting. Things that I think aren't going to happen do, and vice versa. So, um we just gotta, I think we just gotta let the chips fall where they may. And again, I'm totally in favor of a new EPW building. I also, and my other argument is I'm thinking of the taxpayers and I hate to see $3 million go right out the window and for not. Mm -hmm. That yep. could, have, yep. could have been used on other capital projects. Yeah, well, I understand completely. We have, we have something tangible Yep. I but think it, what it, you're, we're stuck in it as a time frame of if you're waiting till spring and the legislation has passed that we've lost some ground, but if you pass it now, the the town passes it and the legislation doesn't, are we stuck having spent $3 million, but it doesn't get spent right away. What do you think the time is for spending it, uh, Randy? If, if this passed, let's say, oh, um, Let's say it goes to um, a vote in December. That would be two months later, uh, the ballot vote, because this is subject to debt exclusion. Yeah. Then your committee meets in January and says, oh, we've, OK, we've got three million dollars and the legislation is still pending. But I mean, uh, it wouldn't be out. What would be the time frame for spending um, this initial phase? Well, we, we're going to have to put out requests for proposals, interview people. And, you know, that's going to take a couple of months anyhow. So, you know, we're, we're already looking at February, March at, at a minimum, I would guess. Uh, I'm, I'm not overly familiar with that process. Too bad Jimmy's not here because he knows that way better than most. Yeah. Um, but that's my guess. Yeah. So You've been that way before, Paul, right? Pardon me? You've been on a building committee before. That's yeah. about right, isn't it? Well, it's been so long ago, but uh, it was on the school building committee. Oh. We, um, uh, we ran into that situation, actually. And the engineering and architectural money that we spent was, again, for not. So I have experience with this going in the opposite direction because the SBA determined that the school renovations that we needed weren't considered i forgot the term they used substantial that didn't qualify for an sba so we had to go on our own for that for all the repairs and all the engineering wasn't even it was for nothing all the architectural for this expansion and renovation project that we're looking at so you know i i've been down this road where it's actually happened and Jimmy was with me on that same committee, and he's been down that same road with me. Well, he's he's aware, and he he's not uh, he doesn't seem to be gun shy about this, Paul. He he hasn't said anything that I've heard that would uh, put any kind of negative on on this proposal to go before fall town meeting. Well, it's unfortunate. I wish Jim were here, but it, it is what it is. And, you know, I, we can keep talking about this forever between the three of us. Right. Well, I, the, the uh, select board meets again on the 4th of October. Do you want to defer this till another time and 
you know, here, David Phil's here. Maybe we can get his yeah. opinion. That is an op that was one of the options I was going to propose too. If you still need uh, to gather more information or to see how this is going with the other boards that you don't need to make a decision today, you could just let this ride along a bit longer. Or when you're you still going to have to go first, Randy, with one of it, if it's select board, and David Phil's going to have to go first if it's well, finance when, committee. So, Linda, when would be the drop dead deadline that you would a recommendation from us? Because you got town yeah. meeting coming up in October. So, you know what would be the abs absolute latest? Six. Well, they post, is it one or two weeks ahead of the meeting, if you wanted to have the uh, Capital Planning Committee's recommendation printed on the warrant. I think that's how it works. But really, basically, any time up to when you walk into town meeting, the, uh, the Capital Planning Committee can make or change its decision. Well, You'd have to, I mean, with a meeting, in a meeting. Your meeting when, Randy, on the fourth? On the fourth. Well, and then it would be the eighteenth or something like that. That's right. Could we meet again on the tenth? Because you you would discuss whether or not you want to defer it. Is that what I'm hearing you say, Randy? Well, I'm I'm just what I'm saying that that if we felt it was appropriate to defer it, since there's only three of us now, we have four, but David's not. <laughs> exactly in tune and it looks like he's driving can you hear us david i'm not driving i'm a passenger but okay so I, I can participate so, so paul you want to tell him what's going on so david the uh, discussion we're having prior to you tuning in is uh, basically uh you know i'm in favor of this project however i'm also thinking that three million dollars is a lot of money to Place down on a bet with no guarantee that you may not ever get anything tangible out of it. And I was wondering if we could defer this to our annual town meeting. And it's it's not something that we as a capital planning committee can do, but it is something the selectmen can do. So maybe if we wait on deferring this until we or wait on making a decision on this until the selectmen have a meeting and they can decide what they want to do. And then we could reconvene again, maybe on the day after Columbus Day, whatever, and uh, go from there. Because the legislation, you know, I, I read it over, David, it's going to set up a whole new authority. It's going to be a, a whole new infrastructure. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. You know, they have to get the people appointed. They have to set up the rules, regulations, policies, get the application process on board. And so there's there's going to be quite a uh, time gap there between the vote of the legislature and the day that they actually open up the gates to the cities and towns for applications. Yeah, I mean, I'd be in favor of deferring it, I think, as well. Um, kind of what I was talking about last time, I think. $3 million is a lot of money uh, just to kind of have on the shelf there. And I, I fear that, well, my, my personal opinion is we'd be better off asking for the entire amount to see what the sentiment of the voters is at town meeting, because if we're going to ask for $3 million, that might get approved. We're going to draw up plans. And then depending on the sentiment at that next town meeting, when we go for the remaining dollar amount for construction, you know, we might have just wasted two and a half, three million dollars in a design phase that might never come to fruition. So I, I think if, for transparency, asking for the whole dollar amount up front so people can decide, is this something we want to do, would probably be a better bet than piecemealing it. And yeah, we might get some grants from the state, but like every other grant that we've applied for, the answer is always Hadley's too rich of a town or there's always some kind of caveat where we don't qualify. So, I, I, you know, we just need to prepare people for a worst case scenario of having to spend $30 million if we actually do this. I I, I think I agree with that, David. Uh, it's similar to what's going on with Russell School 
in where they were asking for 1.2 million to shore it up and then not knowing what was going to happen thereafter. And my opinion of that was we were going to sp spend 1.2 million. And then when we find out that it cost 25 million to fix the building and everybody would balk at that. So we just wasted a million too. So I, I kind of agree with you that it would be best to throw everything out at once. So, so that people aren't, shocked later and decide, oh, no, I don't want to spend an additional $27 million, whatever it's going to be. But I do think we need as as much of the full committee as we can get to, to discuss this one more time. I agree so I with you. I would like to I defer our decision until whenever, October 10th or whatever you said, Paul. I'd recommend the 9th, but that's Columbus Day. Uh, that's the, the middle of the long weekend. I'm actually going to be uh, away through the 10th. Um, I was going to suggest make one. So um, we always think of the Capital Planning Committee as uh, voting up or voting down. But you you can also pass. A, you can also before you do those votes, even if you're, you might be waiting for October or a later time to make an actual decision. But you can send along your concerns. You can, we can write this up. Your your voice what your concerns are to the select board and finance committee and and the uh, building um, the DPW building committee. Um, that uh, you discussed this. You're concerned about spending three million dollars and not knowing whether the town will be able to follow through with the balance of the twenty seven. Not knowing whether the legislation is going to come through and, and provide a grant. So these are the concerns that you have and why you're not making a decision at this time. And if the uh, if more information or better information comes to light over the next few weeks, you will meet again and uh, maybe be better able to make a decision. Well, I think it'd be great. You know, I totally agree with you. Linda. And it would be great to know what the board of selectmen decide regarding this, whether or not to defer it or to do what David's talking about too is to go for the entire amount. So I, I think that October 4th Selectmen's meeting would really help us out when we get together again to make a final recommendation. So I would recommend, Paul, that you go to that meeting. I'm going to be out of town, I, and I don't believe I'm going to have access to Zoom, so I don't think I'm going to be in attendance for the meeting. So if you could try to be there, you or you, David, somebody that can discuss this with the board. Okay, what time is that? It's October 4th at 6 o'clock, the meeting starts. And I don't know, can we, somebody better talk to Carolyn and get make sure it's on the agenda. Otherwise, you can't talk about it. You're right. I'm not going to be able to be there that night either, Randy. And I know where you're going. That's <laughs> <laughs> The senior center? Yes. All right, then why don't we defer any votes or any further discussion then, unless anyone else has something to add. Will the uh, selectmen have their meeting on the 4th? I will try to make that. Okay. Six o'clock. So you're deferring until after select board 10-4 to sit, 10 -4 meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I will. I, it might just be worth mentioning one other thing because David, Phil has mentioned voting on the whole thing. And and you, I think it's a little late in the game for fall town meeting to say, we're going to change this $3 million request to 30 right. um, uh, and, uh, and expect that to go anywhere. Um, and then, but short of waiting all the way till annual town meeting, which will make a, uh, this is going to be very time consuming at a time, which is also another, a very time consuming meeting. We've got a lot to do at the annual meeting that there is the possibility of having a special town meeting as we did with the other buildings in town, having a special meeting, town meeting in between um, the two meetings for the for the sole purpose at this point, I don't know if something else will come up for, for the sole purpose of dealing with the, uh, the the DPW building and then um, and perhaps voting on the entire 
one at that point. It will be a few months from now. Maybe there'll more, be more information on the legislation, more information on a number of things from the building committee, and maybe you'll have be better, better prepared, or the just because of time passing that the building committee will have be better prepared for um, making their case on the entire building. So, I mean, that's another possibility of what could happen um, with the select board, I suppose. All that will be discussed on the fourth. Yeah. Correct, Randy? Thank you so much. Yes. I'll yeah. talk to Carolyn and make sure that it gets on the agenda. Perfect. Okay, I'm looking at my calendar right now and I can't do, I'm working on the 10th and 11th. Can, could we meet on the 12th, which is a Thursday? I wouldn't um, have a problem with that. Say that again. Yeah, the 12th is when they actually will be posting the special town meeting, but I don't think having your answer, having uh, your committee, if you don't care about not being um, on there for a recommendation, it doesn't matter. I could do the 11th. Yeah, and we can always give the recommendation afterward, tell the moderator so that he can let the people yep. know. It's happened many times. Okay. So does the 12th work for you, David and Bill? It does. Yes. Do we want another daytime meeting like this? Seems to work. Uh, that's I like I was, it. I was yeah, fine with me. At two. Okay. Yes. Okay. What we seem to be not getting is the school, but we didn't get them. Um, I don't know that an evening meeting would make a difference, but and you're all four here. So this is fine. And then we have a better chance too of getting um, Scott. Um, or Jim. Others and Jim. Linda, who is the rep from the school? Is it Christine or? Uh, Paul Pfeiffer is the primary and then Chris, uh, Chris Bachinski is alternate. I, I don't know. We don't officially have alternates, but um, at least she, <laughs> this is how they've set it up. All right. Any, any, uh, um, the superintendent is aware that we're concerned about school committee uh, attendance, participation, not their attendance, but their, their input, their input and participation mm -hmm. in this process. Yeah, it's good to, good to know that. All right. Well, there's no other business that anyone else has. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.